Welcome to the second of our Thriving Weekend sessions. Today we have Maya all the way from Berlin, um, who is the founder of Garden State Candles, and she's here to walk us through a beautiful floral arrangement class. Um, so I'll let you take it from here, but thank you so much for uh, being with us this evening and we're really excited to make something beautiful with you. Thank you for having me, Lauren and Jesse. Um, I might be a little bit slow in my tone of talking just because of the long flight, but I'm just as excited to be here and it's really a joy for me to create something beautiful, even if it's virtual. Um, so I'll give a little background about myself. Um, I'm born and raised in Washington, D.C. I'm the founder of Garden State Candles, and I launched my business out of my kitchen. So originally in 2017, we were a small artisanal candle brand. Um, and in 2018, I was able to open my first brick and mortar. And in the summer of 2019, we grew our company to include more artisanal uh, home decor uh, items from both local and international artists and artisans. And in the summer, we decided to take a natural step towards um, including dried flowers and dried floral arrangements and installations as part of our brand. Um, and hence also our name, Garden State. So a lot of Americans ask me if I come from Jersey. As I mentioned, I come from DC, but it's more of a garden state of mind. Uh, since all of the ingredients that we use are plant-based and inspired by the different plants and flowers that grow in our garden, wherever that may be in the world. Um, the logo of my brand is my dog because we donate, well, it's inspired by my dog's face. Um, we donate a portion of our profits to animal rescue shelters around the world. So we work with about seven different countries now, and that's a really important uh, part of our brand. And I just want to touch a note on why we include dried flowers. So as we do consider ourselves to be a waste-free company and a very sustainable, it's at our core, um, as well as like nostalgia and poetry and romance. Um, that's why I also did, decided to include the dried flowers as part of our collection because they are everlasting. So they will last a lifetime. If you have any flowers that have color in them, we recommend avoiding any direct sunlight, just like you would with a piece of artwork um, to best preserve the color. Is there any questions so far? No, everyone's muted, okay. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to briefly introduce you to the flowers that I have on the table. Um, they may or may not be the same that you have, but I will just give you a little idea. So these are really popular. These are called Liguris, um, is their Latin name, but they're mainly known as bunny tails. So we work with them in a natural light brown color. And I also have them in white. Um, so you can get them in all types of colors, dyed or bleached. I mainly only work with um, natural colors actually. So, I mean, natural uh, plants, nothing that's dyed, but to bring up some pops of color and to liven it up a bit, I also took some dried billy buttons. Um, they're also known as little craspedias. They're like little balls of sunshine. Really nice to add. Um, we also have some dried oat. So the dried oat adds, um, a, it's a really great filler, but it also adds a little color. So we have it in brown and, and a light violet. Um, everyone can also after share what, what they have so that we can see all the different elements we're working with. This is called miscanthus. It's also known as reed grass. It grows everywhere, especially near swamps and lakes and by the beach. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, these are all the lagurus as well, and so is the oat. You can often find these in the countryside, just growing widely. So if you want you to be very sustainable, you can also just go pick them yourselves on a nice walk, nature walk one day. And as my centerpiece is a protea, it's a natural yellow protea. Um, what I love about the dried flowers is there's like a lot of symbolism behind them. So the protea has a very soft interior, but kind of almost like a dinosaur uh, outer casing, which is quite hard. Um, and it's the symbol of friendship. 
Um, so always this harder out shell um, to protect us, but also like this soft and very sensitive interior. Uh, the different uh, elements that we also have today is tape. So some people have brown, some people have green. Um, I've already cut some little pieces off, but you can also feel free to just cut it off as you go. So we would need some scissors. And you don't need necessarily cicadas. If you want to trim your bouquet at the end, uh, then you will. But otherwise, if you're happy with the length of your uh, stem so far, then you don't need to trim them. And then I also have some ribbon that we can tie the bouquet with at the very end. All good for now? Yeah, cool. Okay, so there are two different ways of making the bouquet. Um, especially when you're working with long stems, it's quite tricky to hold the bouquet. So you always wanna hold the bouquet between your index and your thumb, and then rotate the different stems with your middle finger and your pinky. Uh, when you don't have like so much of this finger coordination or when you're working with these longer stems, it's easier to make these little tiny bouquets. So that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna to make little bouquets like this, and then we'll assemble them together as to make one big bouquet, I mean. So we always want to take the fluffiest or the filler as we call it. So for my bouquet, it's the reed. You can also share what you have. And when we're working um, with the bouquet making, we always wanna work clockwise. So you always wanna build in a circular form. Some people, it really depends on personal preferences. There's no judgment of what is a beautiful or not beautiful bouquet. It's, it can be very personal. Some people like things to be very asymmetrical. Some people like things to be very symmetrical. Um, some people only want a frontal bouquet and don't really mind the back since it'll be against a wall. So as you're making your bouquet, just be mindful of all sides. But if you really want something to be frontal, that's totally up to you. So uh, we always wanna take the filler part. So for me, it's the reed grass. If you have multiple skinny um, fillers, I can't really see what everyone else has. Nice, some branches. <laughs> and then we're going to put in our smaller elements. So for instance, I'm going to take in some oat and I'm going to place it in the middle over here so you see that. I also am going to place the same one on the other side. So that's front and back. And again, we always want to kind of hold with our index and thumb, it really helps. And then we're going to add our smaller elements. So these, like for instance, with the Ligurus, I really like to have asymmetrical bouquets. I find them like quite natural and wild um, and less structured. So to me, there's a bit more of a romantic side to that. So I always put them at different heights. And then you just need to really adjust depending on your personal preference. So again, we always want to work clockwise. So I have two little ones there and I also wanna be mindful of the back. So I'm gonna add that in the back. And then if I find that there are quite a few stems and it's, things are starting to move around, then I'm just gonna simply take some tape and then tape around it. And it'll keep things in place. And then you can keep building within that same little mini bouquet. And then we can just keep adding tape. That's totally fine. And it just helps us really not lose anything or move anything. You guys see? So then after I have that, I do want to have, so my main element, as I mentioned, was the protea, which is this one. So I'm gonna put that at the very end, um, but I do want my little pops of color to go in there. So then that's like our second main piece. So it, oh, you can always have it somewhere in the middle or I also like to kind of, depending on my bouquets, have them come out at different angles so that there's always like a, something that will attract the eye in the different corners. 
So what that, what I mean by that is when you're making your little bouquets, always put your little pop of color or your second main piece in a different place. And then a nice trick to kind of hide all of these stems when it's feeling a bit too stemmy and very bushy in the front is just grab a little element. So for instance, here I have the Ligurus and I always like to make them kind of climb in a trail like form so that it seems like they're kind of growing out of in, into the bouquet, but also at a different height. Does everyone see that? So that kind of trails in. Maya. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where, where do Sorry. Put the flower tape? We put the flower tape around the stem so that it looks like this and we have like a little tiny bouquet. Got it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank oh, you. That's so cute. You're making like a little boutonniere. I love that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That is so fun. And then, so right now I have two pieces, two little bouquets. I'm gonna go ahead and put them together. So again, as I mentioned, we don't want them to be perfectly side by side just because I like to have different volumes gonna go back a little bit. So these are the two and I'm going to marry them like this. So that, does everyone see that? It looks nice and even. Mm And what's great about the dry flowers is again, like you can make them in all types of sizes, both large and we make, as I mentioned, uh, installations. Should we do another one of, of? Yeah, let's do another one. And then we can either have a bunch of little. Oh, these should, should I do another one of these? Yeah, you can do as many as you'd like. If you can have a bunch of little ones, or you can make one really big one with all of these little ones. That's totally up to you. Thank you, Maya. Thank you, Maya. Thank you, Maya. So cute. But yeah, you can um, make large bouquets, small bouquets. Some people like something really, it also depends on the vase that you'd like to put it in. So a lot of our clients, for instance, they like really skinny tulip vases. So for instance, they would stop with a bouquet that's about this size. I'm gonna keep going. There's also something, for, it depends, it's, it's really different to work with dried flowers versus fresh flowers. But I find there's something very meditative um, from working with them. I remember once though I, I did this, um, not workshop, but I was, my mom came to visit me in Berlin and we were making some bouquets and she was getting really frustrated because she couldn't really maneuver the dried flowers as easily as the fresh ones. <clears throat> yeah, I'm finding that a little bit too, like you have to be a little bit careful that they don't break. Yeah, the, usually depending on the ones that you have, like the one, the Ligurus, for instance, these are quite thin. Yeah. Um, so they're a bit more fragile, but usually the dried flowers are, are quite sturdy. Um, what I find what was a bit like troubling at, at the beginning was that they move so much. Um, so when you would have like, for instance, your, the, the flowers where you wanted them to be, then they would move and it was a bit frustrating at the beginning. But again, it's, just using the right amount of tape. And also you don't wanna secure things too tight so that you can still keep it loose and you can still move things around.
and dried flowers really became like a huge trend um, lately. I want to say last year it really kind of exploded and we got we got a lot of requests for people wanting to do installations in their home or for weddings and events um, back in 2019 pre Rona and um, we also offer the workshops where people can actually make their own um, what's it called? like the wreaths. How's everyone doing? Good. Oh, we have some Amanda and Sydney in. So that's how you unmute, okay? Do you have a uh, question? I made another one. Beautiful. <laughs> Blair's having the time of her life over here. <laughs> so is Mimi. Can I hire you, Blair? You're really quick at this. <laughs> Thank you. Want to come to Berlin in Germany? Want to go to Germany? No, we want you to come to Florida. <laughs> I can't believe it's been a year and a half. Or you're invited too. <laughs> I'll be there. Where's Amanda? Amanda is participating, but she can't have her video. Why, Blair, Blair, what do we do now? I'm not sure. Can we yeah. take this? We're still making it. Make mm -hmm. more okay. and more. Want to mute again? <laughs> more and more and more. Maybe. I like it when it's not muted. <laughs> so you want to like hear the running yourself? The running commentary over here? <laughs> yeah, of yeah, course you can help. help. Wait, maybe go sit on Mimi, though. Mm -hmm. Just learn to sit on me. But we need some tape right here. Yeah. So we That looks so good, Whoa. Mimi. Ooh, very nice. Maya, do you want to um, show Amanda and Adam, who just joined, a little bit of what we're doing thus far so they could maybe catch up? Absolutely. So, um, welcome. We started with different little packages of flowers. So like these little tiny bouquets that we've made. So again, when you're starting to make your bouquet, you always want to start with the fluffiest part, which we call the filler. So you wanna lay your filler facing you, and then you wanna take your lighter and different elements. And you always wanna work in a clock, um, clockwise um, direction. And when you're adding the different elements, you always wanna be mindful of all the different sides. So again, you don't wanna just garnish the front, but the sides and the back, depending on your personal preference, if you do like something symmetrical or more wild, um, that's totally up to you to decide. But when you're working with something a bit more symmetrical, then you, want, you really wanna pay attention that you're always working in um, clockwise direction. Um, and then, so what I was mentioning earlier is that I, my filler is the reed grass. And then I'm also working with some bunny tails, which are both natural and white. So those are just like little accent elements. And then I'm also working with some dyed oat. This will bring in some pops of color. I have it in brown and in violet. And then my second main element is the billy button. It's also known as Craspedia. They look like little yellow balls of sunshine. And then my main element is the protea. Um, and my main element, I will save it for the end. If you are going to work, for instance, with- oh, So this is, okay. With uh, like, what, like, let's say you want to use four white roses in your bouquet, then you want to build them. You want to include them in each of your bouquets. Um, but I'm just going to have one main centerpiece. When we're making the little tiny bouquets, you want to use your tape to tape it around and then we'll tape together our little bouquets. So I've already made four little bouquets and then I've taped them into two. 
larger ones. And does anyone have a question? Yeah. You have a question? Uh, uh, is this like one of them? <laughs> Um, we want to hide the tape so that the tape doesn't, so that we don't notice the tape in the bouquet. Okay. Because the flowers are just so much more beautiful than the tape. So when we're binding the tape, we want to bind around the stem. You would mind about this. Yeah, right around the stems. Okay. Yeah, that would be Kind of like you would do with a ponytail, right? Around your hair. Cool. Makes sense. So now I'm putting my main element, which is the protea in the middle. Um, and then I'm going to move around the different little last ones and I'm going to put in my last accent notes, which will be the bunny tails, wherever I feel that it's missing some. But so to give you an idea, this is what I think I would look like. Let's see. Talking oh, to you. Go ahead. Uh, is this like it? Yeah, maybe we can use just a little bit less tape, but yeah, that's definitely better. Here, wait. Show, show Liza. Show yours. Ooh, look at Liza. Ooh, beautiful. And those, you know, you can use those as little boutonnieres or as like a corsage or on top of a nice Mother's Day gift as a gift topper. Or if you have a nice fancy dinner, then you can put it on the plates and the, or in the napkins and put people's names in it. It's a great Ooh, idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. Leave it to Maya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boudonniers are, we also sell them in our shop. And sometimes people are, are, they love them because they're so cute, but they're always kind of like intrigued at like how versatile they are. And I always say like, they're the best gift toppers or, you know, if you have a nice dinner or if for a wedding, but also just, you can stick them onto the wall. So in our store, we have an entire wall um, where we just put a little bit of flower tape on the back of the bouquets and then stuck them to the wall. And it's, it's very beautiful, like a romantic sweet um, a decoration. And I was thinking like for a kid's room, it's really cute. You just need, a lot of tiny little fast hand helpers to make a bunch <laughs> to fill a wall. So now I'm, I've binded the entire bouquet together. I'm now going to adjust where I see fit. And again, like I said, I always like to have them kind of trailing up. So that's like a little explosion of um, of the bouquet. If there are some parts where you see some stems and you wanna hide them, like for instance here, I'm hiding some green stems with some oat and some ligurus. So you just wanna make sure that you have some extra little fillers um, at the end for your bouquet so that you can adjust your bouquet where, how you like and make sure that nothing is left bare or uneven.
If you don't have ribbon, you can also use raffia, which is this natural brown string to bind your bouquet if you wanna really keep it nice and neutral or simple. I also, if I use a ribbon, I always like to put some raffia underneath the ribbon, just because sometimes the ribbon slips or you can just put in some um, flower tape so that the ribbon can really hold on to the bouquet without slipping. Yep, and then perfect. Uh, is this how you do it? So do you, you see how we have a little bit of space in between? What will be really nice and helpful to keep your bouquet together is if you pinch the stems, so just above the tape, bring your thumb and your index above and you pinch the stem and then wrap the tape so that it's nice and tight around your stems. Yeah, like that. that. Yeah. Perfect. Good job. Tape, please. <laughs> like surgery over there. <laughs> Perfect. And then... Look at that. Look at mine. Put some ribbon. Lauren, let's see how yours are going. Wow. wow. Can we, can I, you talk so that we can see you full screen? <laughs> Say again. Lauren was showing us hers. Look, see. Oh, you can stay in here and eat. Okay. Sit right here, please. And I'm working on another one. <gasps> oh, so wow. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> Maya, where do you generally get your dried flowers? I get them from Holland and France. And Germany, of course. Uh, I'm going to trim them just a little bit so that it's nice and even. You don't need to trim them too much. Also, if you know what vase you're going to put them in, you can always grab your vase and have an idea of where you would like to cut. Make sure you cut directly into a trash. How was it? Did you like it? Uh, Maya, why did you leave? I went to get a vase. To get a vase? Flowers then. So I can put my flowers in it. Say hi. Look who it is, Maya. <gasps> hi. Oh, my hair. Hello. Which Larry to eat? It's baby Huey. Hi. Wow. She looks so pretty. Can I please have some flowers? Wait, are you guys coming back to DC soon? Monday night. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay, please. So we'll see you. Don't worry. Definitely. I'm here till forever. Magnifique. <laughs> I'm here for three weeks for a month. Whoa. Yay. Three weeks. Then she's coming to see us. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. This is what it looks like in this phase. Blair can see. Beautiful. So pretty. So pretty. It's kind of hard. And if it falls, another way that, that's really helpful to kind of keep it together, you can also take another piece of lighter string like this string, like this is raffia or a ribbon, and you can make a nice bow around it so that it's nice and snug. And you don't see the, the flower tape. 
Let's see what you have in your hand. No? Yeah. Uh, is this how you do it? We'll add some more that, yeah, we're gonna add some more to it. Yeah, yeah, we, we want it to be a little bit more garnished so that it feels a bit more full. Yeah, a little more full like this one. And I'll make a tiny little mini one with what I have left. Ooh, okay. So you can add more stuff for paper. Mm. Okay, okay. Say something? We are almost out of flowers. What should we use? Well, if you're almost out of flowers, then I guess we you've done you've finished making the bouquets, right? So I've I've just used my last flower and I'll show you what I just did. Tiny tiny little bouquet. I think I will wrap around um, a napkin for a nice dinner. Beautiful. Yeah, Beautiful. What a great idea. You're, wait, that. what? You're eating flowers for dinner? I'm no, not going to eat them. Just decorate so that the guests have something to go home with. It's going to make it like a, as a parting gift for people. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? Mm, what are you eating? That looks yummy. Rice. And what else? What else did you have? I just have she's an edamame. Ooh, and, a <laughs> and there you go. It looks like this when it's trimmed. Beautiful. Beautiful. I have a cheese and mommy and some rice. <laughs> you do. You have rice and edamame and cheese too. I'm getting the whole load out over here, guys. <laughs> I want cheese, rice, and edamame. It's something <laughs> when I was a kid, I I used to only eat like it was like a ham rolled inside rice and you just like roll it in. <laughs> and with this just like melted cheese on top. You were an interesting child. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to own and always have like midnight um, cereal in the kitchen. That was a big thing. We don't have cereal in Germany. No one really eats cereal in Germany, which kind of broke my heart when I first moved there, but then I... Cereal. Did you send yourself some or you just decided you don't need it? I just decided I don't need it. Because also, we didn't, we didn't drink milk growing up here because my mom doesn't like milk. So we used to put right. orange juice in our cereal. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I don't remember that. Probably because I didn't eat it. Yeah, and then we used to put orange juice in the cereal. And it was just like, everyone thought we were complete weirdos. Um, and really yummy. Really yummy. <laughs> and yeah, and then I just didn't want to, I, like milk always gave me a tummy ache. So I didn't want to drink a bowl of milk with my cereal. So I gave cereal up. But it's really sweet because every time I come home, my mom's always like, I bought you your favorite cereal. Oh, now do you have it with milk? 
No, I still don't drink milk. I only drink oat milk, actually. Oh, okay. But do you put oat milk in there or you just have it dry? No, I don't eat it. I'll put some orange juice in it. <laughs> some, some habits never die. Voila. Voila. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So pretty. Cute, huh? Mm -hmm. And if you have like two little ones left, you can always ask. Grandma Marla or Tia Jesse to put it in your hair. Look at that. You can do that. You know, you can take the flower tape and you can um, attach it around your hair elastic. And then oh. you can put little flowers in it. Yeah, exactly. Or even like here. That's a great idea. Mm hmm. Blair Bear, is it in there? Blair, no, but no, thank you. I think Tamal left. This is so fun. Yeah. So you have two, you have like a pink and a yellow one, I see. So I made like these two. Oh, so cute. On our website, we just we just came out with these little sets as well, like little boutonnieres. They're so yeah. cute. And then this one that I like a lot. I love that. It's beautiful. That's really beautiful. So you have some statisse in there and some ligurus and what else? Some, yeah, statisse. Oh yeah, and you also have some little oats, some um, bleached oat as well, and some natural oat, I think. Yeah. It's very beautiful. It's fun. It's kind of like fun to be creative. I, yeah, and that's also something that I do with the with the candles is is just for us to reconnect with our senses so the candles of course it's more with sensorial so our our sense of scent but also memories because it's directly correlated to the part of our brain that um, connects us to emotions and memories but the dried flowers are also very therapeutic in the way that they help us reconnect with touch um, and, and also just kind of relaxing the mind. So I've, as I mentioned before, I find it very meditative because I'm really not thinking when I'm making the flowers. I'm just kind of, it's like kind of like intuitive feeling um, when we're constructing the little bouquets. But yeah, at the end of the class um, in in Berlin, usually like, especially in Germany, the, the workshopees are a little bit more shy they're they're not so talkative but at the end of the class everyone is just like has a new friend which is really also nice to see that people take the time to disconnect from the digital to connect with each other as well um and not just with themselves that's like my main passion behind the the workshops and even virtually like we're still able to you know see each other even in our most personal spaces in our homes so that's also really nice. Maya, so I wanted to thank you because this was lovely and I learned a little bit. <laughs> so wonderful just to see you in that lab. Yeah. So I hope to see you soon. And thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse, for including me and thinking of me. Of course. Thank you so much. All of these little bouquets together. Fun. We are. We're going to definitely tie yes. them all together. Nice. Quite a few. Yeah. Put a little ribbon on it. A lot of them. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. You can also, if you like, depending on your style, some people like to put um, some uh, tissue, like suede paper. How do you call this? Tissue paper um, behind the little uh, flower bouquets. So in, in our shop, we offer both options with or without uh, tissue paper and you can use like for instance bright emerald green or some purple um it's a nice little touch as well i love this so fun <laughs> yeah. well and now we have it recorded so i can send it out and um you know we can have it for yeah and you can do it really with any any type of flower um the flower making doesn't limit itself to just bouquets, but also you can put them on rings, like on crowns, on wreaths, 
um, anything really. You can use them for multi-purpose as well. Hang them upside down, take a piece of rope and kind of do a little loop installation. For installations, we recommend using um, flower foam and chicken wire and it's very simple. And it's really beautiful the different things you can make with that. Yeah. I love the all the ideas of what you can do with the little ones, like yeah. on a gift or um, on a you know um, place well, yeah, setting can. for dinner. That's really cool. Or even just a little tiny bouquet at your office on your desk, you know. Right, right. That you don't necessarily, especially now, can't always go home and water your your plants or your flowers. So it's something that will always be there. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going to put these up um, and around. I'm excited. Thank oh. you. Well, thank you, Maya, so much. Really appreciate you joining us, especially after your long flight. And we'll be My sure pleasure. to share this video with everyone who registered. Um, it's um, rest. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Get some, get some rest. <laughs> sleep. Yeah. I will sleep with the baby. Good. And say hi to Veronique and Lucienne, please. I will. Oh, wait. Did you talk to mom? She got some beautiful flowers from you and Jay. Yes. If I was there, I would have just made these for her and handed them off. <laughs> Instead, I, I said, I was like, so the box that they send them in is gorgeous. I know. It's a night. The urban stems. Yeah. Company. I love it. Yeah. It is. I'm going to put this in my hair. That was a great idea. Yeah. Thank you. And happy Mother's Day to all the mamas and mamas to be. Happy <laughs> Mother's Day. <laughs> Say bye, Blair. Aww. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. No. <laughs> Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.